Hey guys, it's Brian with Brightie 3D. I'm here to do a tutorial with you on the puppeteer and how to use the puppeteer. Uh, we're going to do something real simple here today. We're just going to make her, uh, Victoria, look at us and uh, give us maybe a wink and a little smile, and that's going to be the end of that. Um, this kind of stuff can take forever if you, depending on how detailed you want to get with your animation. But this is just to show you how the puppeteer works so I'm not going to worry too much about all the little details but anyway there's a lot of parameters to move there's a lot of stuff to do so let's get going anyway uh, I have the puppeteer docked over here uh, if you have not used puppeteer before you can find it up here in windows tabs come down to puppeteer and select it and because I have it docked it comes up here yours will come up in a window here by itself and then you can just drag it over here and dock it if you want I like it docked over here because it gives me more room to work with, more area to see. Anyways, um, real quick I want to show you the timeline. You want to make sure your timeline is on the first frame or zero frame before you get started. And it doesn't make any difference how many frames are in here for your total frames or your range or anything else. It's all going to change from Puppeteer, so don't worry about that. So I'm going to minimize that right now. Okay, so basically, I'm going to start by animating Victoria 4.2. In Puppeteer, you've got three modes. You've got an edit mode, which is where you're going to actually make your movements on your subject here. You've got your premier, uh, preview mode, which is where you're going to be able to scrub through and see what you've done to your character. And then you've got the record mode. And what the record mode does is, as you scrub through your animation here, it actually writes the keyframes for you on your timeline which is a lot easier to do than strict, just straight timeline animation, as we all know. So I'm going to show you what this does. So anyways, I'm starting. Now this button here is where you're going to select what in your scene you want to use Puppeteer with. Okay, so of course we're going to do Victoria 4.2 right now. So this is the position she's going to start in. So first thing I'm going to do is just, doesn't matter where you click in here, it makes no difference. I'm going to click in here and make a node. This is the, my start node. Okay. So from here now I'm going to build upon this. So let me give a closer look here at her face. Okay. And I'm going to have her look over at the camera and give us a wink and a smile. So first thing is let's have her, uh, let me select her head here. Okay, let's have her look this way first. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and have her head turn this way as well. And we'll adjust it so that her neck stays straight. Okay, and that'll be good. I like to just animate these a little bit just for extra realism because the human body never stays completely, completely stiff. I like to just give a little bit of motion in the rest of the body too, and I'm going to do this very quickly. If my computer will keep up with me here, okay. All right, so we've got that. So now all she's done now is turn her head a little bit and her eyes, and I'm going to go ahead and let her give us a little bit of an expression here, a little bit of a smile, just there, okay. Now what we're going to do is add that node. So now we've got two nodes here. So we've got our start node, which is when she was like that, and we've got our next node, which is like this. Okay, so we can see what happens right here. Without having to preview anything, you can see your motion right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and build on this just a tiny bit more, and I'm going to go very quickly through this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, I'm not getting too detailed with everything. Uh, I said I want this to take 45 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to have her go ahead and blink her eyes, though. Okay. All right, and just change her expression a tiny bit. Just go back to the normal. Okay, we got to keep this time down, so I'm really trying to rush through this portion. But I just can't... Uh, I don't like to do animation where she's just stiff as a board. It's got to move, have some kind of movement to it here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add that node. Now I'm going to add this node closer because she's blinking. So I want her eyes to open up quicker when I go to do the actual animation. Okay, and I'm clicking quickly and I understand, you know, I'm kind of forgetting to click on some things here and then going back and doing it 
and I apologize, but I don't want this to take forever. So I'm just, as you can see, all I'm doing is building on what I already have here. So I'm not, this is not really anything that's probably new to you. Uh, but I do like to, like I said, kind of keep this moving. And make sure everybody's there, okay? So that's good. I'll put this one right next to it again because she opened her eyes after blinking. So now I'm going to do one more node. Uh, I'll do two more nodes and then we can move on with this so it doesn't take too long. So let me select her head again. I'm going to have her look towards us a little bit more. Keep her head straight. And I am going to, whoops, give those eyes over to the side. Have them look up a little bit now. Let's go ahead and go in here and make her happy a little bit again. Okay, and then I'm going to do like I always do and just do some of these little adjustments here. It, you know, it doesn't really matter what you're doing on these. The main focus is going to be on her face. But you don't want the rest of the body to look static either. So I'm just doing that to make sure that we've got movement everywhere. I'm going to skip a square on this one just so I give myself a little bit more space because now she's already blinked and she's moving. So now I'm going to go ahead and make her look at us. And I was going to make her wink, but I think for the sake of time... Let's just have her look back at us, and we'll have her... Yeah, I guess we'll have her wink. It shouldn't take me that much time. Let's go ahead and do that now. So let's select her head here. Let's make her eyes come back over to us. Okay, let's go ahead and give her head a little bit of a twist. A little bit of a bend. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and animate these parts right now so I don't forget before I get into the face. Okay, so I'll just give these a little bit of a there okay all right so now go back to her face and let's have her wink okay so i'm going to just go down to her left eye and close it okay and i'm going to bring her cheek up a little bit because that's what would happen when you wink to someone okay so we'll give the left cheek a flex there we go and let's bring the corner of her mouth up just a little bit too. So we go to the left side of the mouth, pout, sneer, and we're going to go towards sneer just a little bit, just for the heck of a hair. Okay, and you can also do the mouth corners up a little bit. There, and that gives her a look kind of like she's winking. I'm going to bring the brow down just a little bit too. Actually, there, I'm sorry, my bad. Take this back to zero and put, do the left brow down all the way. There we go. Okay, so that looks like a decent wink. So that's that. I'm going to add that right about here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just have her obviously go back to a position after she's winked. So to do that, now you can see by the, the right side as 5.9 was the default number here. So I'm going to put this back to 5.9 so it'll be even going to open up her eye again okay that yeah. and while I'm thinking about it I'm going to go ahead and have her eyes go to the side a little bit and then let me put back the rest of her face we want to go down here and adjust the cheeks back the way they were okay the cheek flex here should be about 11.3 just like the other side yeah, should look good and then this one we're going to put this back to 0.3 as well do zero here okay and this one's not adjusting for me so 11.3 is good so we'll take this one down to 9.7 we're pretty much back to the way we were in the beginning so now i have her head selected so as always move it a little bit enough to make a difference and I already did this so now here I'm going to change her let's just go ahead and have her go back to this and I'm going to squint, just close her eyes a little bit to make her look a little more mysterious or sexy here uh, maybe like that ok 
okay and I think we're good so at this point we're finished with that so what we're going to do now is we want to go into the preview mode of the puppeteer we'll select this first node and we're going to scrub through it it's not the greatest it's not the greatest it could use some work but the bottom line here is we're trying to show you the puppeteer so I'm not going to fix all this so there's that now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to animate her hair to go along with this so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select C nymph hair go to the parameters and get the C nymph morphs up here okay now in puppeteer what I want to do is I want to look at Victoria on the last frame this is what she looks like at the very last frame so C nymph hair add your first node and then begin animating the hair I'm just going to go ahead and for sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and put some wind on it. Okay, and I'm going to make the wisps kind of go across her face a little bit, and then over on that side like that. There, so that gives us some some hair movement. And again, the, the hair movement can be fairly slow uh, compared to the rest of the animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and build upon that. So I'm going to take this back down to zero, and this one back down to zero, and then I'm going to take the wind back down to zero. Okay, so then that way we'll have some motion for hair, and one more little little blow maybe here to the left here, just going like this. Maybe take the back towards the left a little so you can see that that in and last one bring everything back to zero okay now we're set back to the way we were in the beginning we can go ahead and add our last node let's preview the hair this is just the hair only that looks pretty good okay because I want to move on with the puppeteer Okay, so at this point we're already in Pose and Animate. Our timeline is minimized down here. I'll bring that back up. And I'm going to go to Victoria 4 and the Puppeteer. I'm going to make sure that when I hit Preview, my cursor is back over here at the beginning. Okay, click on that to make sure that she's in the start position. Now when you hit Record, before you hit Record, what you want to do is make sure you know how fast you want to scrub across this. So you look at your animation. I usually like to come up with some kind of a rhythm like a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, and that looked pretty good to me. So that's the rhythm I'm going to use. So what you're going to do, now remember, don't worry about the range or how many frames you've got here. It's going to write it for you. So once you hit record, you're going to go back to this beginning point, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, there she is. Okay, and we, we got 153 frames that took to do that. So I'm going to rewind, and this is very important, rewind your animation back to the beginning before you move on to your next puppeteer recording, okay? So you rewound, she's back at the beginning, you can test that out. You can see her motion, we can see what she's doing. Looks pretty good. So bring it back to the beginning. I always hit rewind just to make sure. I come up here and select the scene and pair, and here is our deal here. We're back at the beginning here, like I said, and let's look at our rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Looking pretty good. So I'm going to bring that back over, and let's record the hair. Now when we record the hair, we've already got 153 frames that it takes for this to be animated. So we don't need the hair to go any further than that. So we want to make sure that when we scrub through here, and it's writing the frames in here, that we don't go too much over the 150. We can always change it, but we don't want to go too much over. So to keep it to kind of the same speed. So I'm going to count again, and I'm going to do that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, and that's about all we did on the hair. So that's good enough. So let's go ahead and go back. Let's scrub through it. You can see her hair motion. You can see her. Everything's looking good. And since that's where the hair and everything really ends, we're going to end it here at 133. So I'm going to change this. 
and I like to know what frame it's rendering. Is this rendering? So it start on frame one. Okay, so here we go. It's looking pretty good. So there you have it. That's looking pretty good. So now you've got this. Now you can go ahead and render out your animation. Okay, and then you see what it looks like for real. I'm going to go ahead and render this, and I will be back when it's done rendering. Okay, so here is our finished rendered animation that we just went through on the tutorial. Let's see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. I mean, I see a lot of things that we could improve upon, but obviously that would take way too much time for a tutorial. So there you go. You've got a good idea of how to use Puppeteer, and the idea now is to go in and experiment, play around, and uh, you'd be amazed at the things you can do. One more shot. Alright guys, take it easy until next time.